What's up everybody? So you might be wondering about buying a golf cart. Well, if you're like me, there's a lot out there. There's a lot to know. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about what I learned buying my golf cart. The one I just got, had it for a while, learned a lot. And if you stay tuned to this video, I'm gonna tell you everything I learned about buying a golf cart on the used market and my thoughts of them, some things you might should think about, some things you probably shouldn't thought think about, and really like what it was like through the whole process. Some of the things I like about my golf cart, some of the things I wish I would have known about golf carts, and batteries and accessories, and kind of like why we bought one. So let's get to it, let's talk about it. Because real talk, okay, golf carts are like, an arms race in your neighborhood. And here in Navy Point, there's a major golf cart arms race going on. And when I posted that I'd gotten this one, it all started from my other neighbor getting a golf cart and we went everywhere on it. And then my other neighbor got a golf cart. And then I was like, man, I need to get a golf cart. And then our, my other neighbor, Russell, got a golf cart. And then my other neighbor, Fisher, got a golf cart. And then I was like, I gotta get a golf cart. So I bought a golf cart and I was like, I don't even know where I'm gonna put it, okay? I'll just figure it out. And that's gonna lead to me buying, building a complete carport for the golf cart. But then I got home and I was able to just kind of squeeze it in there and I made that work. But uh, once you get one, then your other friends have gotta get one. So my neighbor across the street already is trying to get one. My other neighbor in between us is starting to get one. And then my buddy Patty is trying to get one all within one block that everybody is getting golf carts. It's like this thing where when one person gets one, we all want one. And they're not really that expensive, but they kind of are. So it's like everybody can find that one in the backyard that just needs some batteries and throw it in there and get moving. And it's kind of what's happening. It's contagious. So when I first started looking at golf carts about a month ago, I knew absolutely zero about them. I didn't know really the difference between 36 volt and 48 volt versus whatever. I thought maybe, hey, that's how much power they got. Well, there's a lot to this. And I think if I were to start this whole process over again, um, I bought this one off of a friend and it had been sitting in his garage for a while and he just didn't have any use for it anymore. So I was kind of like, a little scared about the transaction over Facebook Marketplace because there's so many scams going on. And I really didn't want to waste a lot of time going from place to place, deal to deal, and wasting a lot of it in the process. I almost just bought a new one just to like walk over to the store, hand them a card, do the transaction, and it was done. And I knew I would get soaked in that process. So what I did is, is I started looking on Facebook Marketplace and I kind of gave up. It had $5,000 price range. I was seeing a lot of golf carts that needed some things. Batteries were a few years old. And you know, these, these batteries are known to not last very long. Didn't really know the difference between lithium and lead acid batteries. So I was just like, you know what? I'm doing this like a kayak. I'm just gonna buy one that looks good and learn as I go and document it here on the channel like I've done everything else so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I do. So my friend had an easy go, it was a 2001 model uh, for, he had originally posted for 4,000 and he took it off, but he posted again for 3,000. All right, it's a big day. I'm pulling up over here to get the golf cart. <laughs> the Yakmobile, baby. Yakmobile. There it is. We played high school ball together. I've known him half my life. I'm going to call this guy and like see what he's got to say. And he was like, hey, man, I just want it gone. I'm tired of people trying to scam me on Facebook for it. And just come over and check it out. So I came over to check it out. We just we did a, a loop around the block and everything was running good and it had enough power. He had just installed this uh, back seat portion back here and it was, it was in really good shape. So I figured with the upgrades that we had on it that I would be pretty safe with this one. So I just went, went for it, paid him, we uh, put it on the trailer. So when I got it home, I did just about like anybody would do. I started geeking out on all the different things because I now had a golf cart. I was looking at accessories and I was looking at batteries because one of the batteries on this uh, cart is, is kind of bad. So it'll give me about four or five miles, really a loop around the entire neighborhood and it's ready to go to sleep. So started looking at battery. Real quick, I noticed the difference between 36 and 48 volt. 48 volt had so many more uh, things that you could do to it, more aftermarket parts and way more 
a lithium battery options and I'll talk about that in the next one but the 48 volts tend to have more things you more accessories they, they, there's a lot of things out there for 48 volt and everybody was considering like the 36 volt to be kind of like obsolete but you know what this one it still does pretty well 15 miles an hour or so um, and I know once I put a lithium pack in it it's gonna do fine I don't plan on going up hills you know boats with a golf cart like my neighbor does um, so I was like, this would suit our needs pretty well. Neighborhood's pretty flat, not going very far. Really with not a lot of people on it. And that's why I was like fine with the 36 volt. If I had to do it over again, I would stay with a 48 volt. That brings me to my next one is lead batteries versus lithium. If you do your research, you'll notice that lead batteries are they're pretty archaic. Uh, they are gnarly, they drip everywhere. You gotta keep the water up to date and they don't last very long at least like two five years depending if you keep them charged well this one had uh, pretty much brand new batteries in it when my buddy got it and they weren't kept charged you know in that process and now they're really not any good and they're very finicky it takes a long time for them to charge and i know that hey i got to spend almost a thousand bucks for lead acid batteries or i can spend 1700 bucks and switch them out with a kit for lithium for this cart and be pretty much maintenance free. Yeah, it's gonna cost more, but it's gonna be a lot less hassle. See, this right here is one of the main reasons why I wanted to get a golf cart is because we're so close to this beautiful view. It's actually a cart path right there. But we have beaches all around the neighborhood and you know we like to come down here and see the sunset every night. And you know, grandma doesn't walk this far or neither does uh, Samantha's parents, so that's right here is the park benches, and this is one of the prettiest sunsets in Pensacola. And this is also where a lot of the SpaceX rockets come in, right here. And the Blue Angels fly right here, so you can just hop on the golf cart, come down here, sit in the park, and watch the Blue Angels, because this will all be people right here lined up watching the Blue Angels. Check out some of those videos where I have uh, shown the Blue Angels in the park, and you'll kind of get my vibe on why. We come down here all the time because it's really majestic out here. And we come to the beach over here a lot too. There's like four or five beaches in the neighborhood. So bringing the paddle boards down, you need a golf cart. There's really no parking for a car, but a golf cart can totally park there. So for me, in a few weeks, I'm going to go ahead, bite the bullet, and probably do, you know, like the big battery pack or like one of those eco batteries. Put the whole kit in here. $2,000. I'll probably have this whole thing re-outfitted. I'll be in this cart $5,000, but it's also got a lot of upgrades. It's got aftermarket, you know, big wheels like rims, which looks pretty cool. Uh, it's got, you know, a pretty good paint job. It's got a nice top. It's got brand new seats on the back. These seats look pretty good. Everything is in working order and it's clean. It's not like it was just pulled off the farm or some yard sale and it was in bad shape. So I was like, you know what? I'll fluctuate a little bit. Uh, and have a, a pretty decent cart. He basically pulled this thing apart, painted the whole thing, cleaned it up, and got it in pretty good shape. So the next thing I wanna talk about that I learned here is the simplicity of these. Guys, do not be scared of working on these golf carts. If you know anything about electricity or about you know modern mechanics, a very regular you know simple tool set can work on this entire cart i mean like even changing the motor out is not a lot to it a basic little house jack and you can lift this thing up don't be scared of that it's simple and if you want to change the batteries out a couple wrenches and a screwdriver and you can do a lot of stuff on this little bad boy and i think that's why they're so popular like as soon as you get home you start tinkering with it and there's so many things you can do on it and we'll talk about that in the in the the next number don't be afraid to work on this bad boy even if you mess something up like it's fixable okay the next one is the parts market and we'll say accessories too there's just so many things you can do after market on this you can put a stereo in it you can put lights on it you can put big wheels lift kits you can make it go really fast you can make keep it going pretty slow you can put you know the rear extra seats you can put mats in it you can put the sky is the limit on this and that's why it's kind of fun is you just keep 
playing with it. It's like, it's like a man's toy in his backyard. And that's kind of what it's turned in for me. We like to go on afternoon strolls with it. And it's just something we can do with the family. Take the cooler to the beach right down the street here in the neighborhood. Go from grandma's house to one of my other rental properties or to my friend's house. And really like just creep along and take everybody with you. It's got seat belts. You can register it to go on the road as a uh, low speed vehicle, as long as you stay under 35 miles an hour. But there's a lot of things that this thing kind of opens the world up to. You can now take mom down to the park instead of her having to get in the car or walk down there. You can do a lot of things that makes it pretty nice. And I think that's why they're catching on so much. I wanted to talk about real quick, gas versus electric. And I had, I was torn on this for a while, gas, electric. Well, my neighbor has gas and it's got lots of power and it's cool to just put two gallons of gas in it and drive for six months. The problem is like if you take it to some RV parks, some places have uh, rules against gas golf carts because they're loud. Um, also, you got to keep an engine running and et cetera, et cetera. Gas has a lot of power. We've launched boats with it. You can see us on the videos launching 16 foot aluminum boat with it. Um, it goes up and down the boat ramp just fine, but you know, it has that gas portion you got to maintenance. Um, some places don't allow the noise. You can hear them coming from a long ways away. Um, whereas electric, they're quiet, they're smooth. Um, you don't have to deal with the maintenance on the motor. You just got the batteries. So it's a trade off between maintaining batteries, maintaining a gas engine. So you just got to think about which one do you want? I think the gas are a little more expensive. Um, you know, but I think it, once you get to the top tier carts, uh, it's going to be pretty close across the board. Those big 48 volt, uh, carts and above have a lot of power, a lot of torque. You can see videos of guys online getting two, you know, running down the road on two wheels because of the torque on these bad boys. And I think they're going to get faster and faster and faster to the point they're almost a car, but you know, you just have to decide which way you want to go. If you've got a farm and you're running that a lot, you might want to go gas. If you've got, if you're just going to and from and you just want something simple to park in the garage, no gas smell, none of that, electric. I, I like electric because I just, I, I don't like dealing with gas motors anymore because it's constant, it's a constant thing to work on. So for me, I'm going to put a stereo system on here and I'm going to put all the reflectors on for it to be street legal. I'm going to probably put a, a roof rack on this bad boy for the paddle boards and for anything I'm taking to the water, um, place to maybe hang like the, uh, the chairs and stuff on it as we're going to and from. And I will definitely put a trailer hitch on here for carrying like a wagon or, um, uh, even pulling the, the boat around. Uh, I probably won't pull it very well, but small aluminum John boats, it'll pull that. So if you follow some of my posts on my, on my Facebook page, last night we were arguing about here in the state of Florida, this vehicle being a low speed vehicle versus a golf cart versus, you know, registering it. Like, what do you got to do? And there was, a, you know, the, the, the law is very vague on these things and everybody likes to lump them into what's called a low speed vehicle. For uh, the state of Florida, it's 20 to 25 miles an hour. If they go on a road that's 35 mile an hour and below, they got to be registered like a car and insurance and yada, yada, yada. But also in the state of Florida, if you go and look at the statutes, it'll talk about golf carts. And, you know, it basically says anything under 20 miles an hour. So like this cart will be under 20 miles an hour because it's just a 36 volt easy go. It's less than a low speed vehicle. And there's this big argument about, do you even have to register those? Like if you get pulled over, what are you, what's going to happen to you? Well, I think if you ask five cops, four are going to give you the wrong answer on the, on this ruling, because it's a low speed, it's not a low speed vehicle. It's not 20 to 25, kind of like electric bicycles. You know, once they go over a certain speed, they're now a motorcycle or a moped. Well, under that, they're still a bicycle and they don't need to be registered. And they, you know, a, a electric bike can get on the road. Well, this one is, is not going to be 20 miles an hour, and I'm not sure. Comment down below if you know the answer to this. Like, actually know the answer and not just spitballing it. That Do they have to clock you going more than 20 miles an hour? And then it's like, really, is that worth it if they're just in the neighborhood going around being safe? Are you really going to make it a problem if, if 
people are just having a good afternoon. Um, they doesn't even spin out. It really doesn't have enough torque or anything to be dangerous and you're not even going but 15 miles an hour, probably not even that. And if you're not out on the road, I personally don't see the problem, but you need to look that up in your municipality. Like if you're in a really busy place, you don't want to get out on the road on this bad boy because it's just not fast enough. That's why a lot of people are making them faster and bigger. Like if you go to 30A or uh, any of the beach communities or some of the big residential golf courses, you're going to see a lot of these on the road. And they're really cool. It makes it a really easy, nice afternoon. As far as the... Also, I'm going to link all the information as far as golf cart regulations in Florida down below because I know everybody's going to argue with me. And that way you can read through them yourself and kind of figure out what you think the law is because it's very vague under 20 miles an hour. Do you actually need to register it? Do you actually need insurance? Is insurance a secondary part of the stop? Can they even make the stop because of insurance? I don't know, but I'm sure they'll try it. So you should probably know the law before you get on one of these and do it. Like I said, I probably will wind up getting a tag because I'm going all over the place in it and I'm actually using it for festivals and clients, things like that. You need to be insured. From what I found on Facebook Marketplace, you can run into golf carts from 2,500 bucks all the way up to 15,000. But 2,500 bucks, 3,000, you could buy, find something pretty good shape. Mine had the upgrades, you know, some Everything was, was pretty nice and had the tires and the rims and the rims, tires were in pretty good shape because you're going to be looking at like 150 bucks per on the tires. So, you know, keep that in mind. But I was looking for something that was in pretty good shape. I figured I would just eat the bullet with the batteries because I'm going to have to change them out sooner or later anyways, whether it's a year, two years, or just converting to lithium and calling it a day. This 36 volt cart has enough pep up for me to get around the, the neighborhood and to put four people on the back, you know, well, really two on the front, two in the back. And we went along just fine. I mean, we were doing 15 miles an hour just fine. So, you know, the Facebook is going to be an interesting thing for you if you're going to go that route. But if you look hard, you can find them with stuff. This one had headlights, taillights, blinker system. I just got to put the little blinker on the tree. And to have it street legal, you're going to need the things a car has got. Windshield wipers, a horn, blinkers, lights. It's going to need, you know, reflectors, everything. I'll link down below, State of Florida, what you would probably actually need just to kind of help you out. But I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with the family on it. And it's going to be around for many years. And these electric motors, there's really not a lot to go wrong with them. And if they do, you just bolt it off and bolt another one back on. So should you get one? I think if you live in a residential place where you can, people are going slow and you want to go to and from on a leisurely afternoon, yes. If you live in a golf course, absolutely. If you live in an RV park, absolutely. If you live by the water like we do here in Navy Point and you have a lot of water view neighborhood, uh, roadways that have speed bumps and they're less than 25 miles an hour absolutely um, whether you want to register it that's going to be up to you um, if you're under 20 I think you're probably gonna be fine but if you're buzzing around and you're really out there in traffic at stop signs and stuff maybe you should you know take it a step further uh, consult local law enforcement and if the answer doesn't make any sense get it in writing carry it with you because you're probably going to wind up being, defending yourself against somebody saying that you're not supposed to have it and you absolutely can have it or not. But uh, I think it's been pretty fun so far. And my wife loves driving it around. And I, as a real estate agent, like to show properties in the neighborhood. And this has been something that I've been able to add to, you know, hey, let's park right here at the house. I'll show you five houses. We don't have to get in a car drive around, worry about parking. It's just kind of fun and leisurely and shows off the community in a very, you know, nice light that you can use a golf cart to get from anywhere in the neighborhood. And so if you are a real estate agent or a business owner and you do a lot of like venues or anything like that where you're out walking the venues, golf cart definitely can become an asset to whatever you're trying to do. I always really wanted one. I always wanted a go-kart, never got one as a kid and a golf cart is kind of like a go-kart. But when you're looking on Facebook Marketplace, they're going to have stuff wrong with them. Really kind of factor in your head what you can fix, what you can't fix. And the price 
differentiation between the two because it's fairly simple to work on. You know, they're going to have, you know, probably a flat tire because somebody didn't want to take care of it or a battery that's bad or, you know, uh, it could use a paint job or just a power washing. Just keep that in mind because I didn't really want to spend a ton of time looking for one to save a couple hundred bucks. I'd rather just get it, fix it, move on with it because the internet is full of parts. You can get a part for just about anything for this thing. So just keep that in mind. So be prepared for that, okay? You buy one and then it, it morphs into a bigger one and the next thing you know, you got a seven seater. Also, you're gonna need a trailer to get home. It won't fit in the back of a pickup truck. Definitely gonna need a trailer, so figure that out before you buy one because I had to find one after the fact. But that's really it. That's kind of like my thoughts on why I got a golf cart and the things I thought about. I mean, I think I would lean to 48 volts. Um, I would definitely go lithium. Just find a, a, a you know, a battery that's reasonable. It doesn't have to be a $3,000 packet package. Because when I went to batteries, uh, the battery store, they wanted to sell me a $3,600 kit that was $2,200 all day on the internet. And I realized like, you know, you really got to do some research on this stuff and 3000 was ridiculous. But if you use it every day and you like it and it's something you want to do, well, it's not that expensive. And if it makes mom smile or the kids smile, we'll figure it out in the long run. So I hope you guys like this video. This thing is uh, very interesting. It's something to new, uh, new hobby to adopt and uh, it, it can really be uh, as fun as you want it to be, especially when you're cruising along the beach, listening to Jimmy Buffett. So I'll see you guys in the next video. So I hope this video helped you figure out if you want one or not. Uh, it's fairly simple. Don't let it overwhelm you. They're easy to work on. I'll see you guys in the next video.